This is a Procreate specific tutorial. Today, we're gonna learn how to do nebulas. So, what you wanna do is you want to not change your background color. I do not recommend ever changing your background color. But take basically any, what you'd imagine the outer space color will be in the background here, and take that tone. I'm gonna go for a very deep blue and drop it onto layer one. Now, bop up a layer, and I am using the full version of Procreate. So if you're on the pocket version, you might not have some of these brushes or these features, and I'm sorry about that. But if you're in the full version of Procreate, I would suggest going and finding a brush that can lay down color quickly and in an entertaining fashion. I'm going to go with hearts, and I'm gonna work with my darker tones first. Personally, I really like purples in nebulas, so I'm gonna jump to a nice deep tone here. And I like directional. I like using directional tones. So we're gonna work from the bottom up. And keep in mind your light source. My light source is gonna be over here, which means that the tops of the nebula clouds will be painted right in those areas. So just put in, put in your shapes here. I'm going to gently lift my pen off the bottom to get the opacity to sweep downwards. Then maybe maybe another few nebula clouds up here. Something like that, something like that. Just randomize, randomize the direction. But remember, keep keep a final image in your in your head. There we go. There we go. That looks cool. That looks like it's gonna be a cool nebula. So now I'm gonna start moving to slightly brighter colors. Like that. That'll be good. Now I'm going to decrease my brush, decrease my opacity a little bit. Just pop them in there, just a little bit of pops of color. And then over here, a nice veil area. Now keep moving side to side. There we go. Just side to side, randomize your brush a bit. We're also going to be uh, shaving this down a little bit, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. Okay, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna go to a different kind of tone. I'm going to choose a deep, deep turquoise. I'm gonna pop that in around here. See, I like making my nebulas extremely colorful because we don't we don't really know what they would look like to the naked human eye because lots of the times the uh, the pictures that NASA give us are highly color uh, colorized. So we need to find something that's going to give us just a a nice fun idea of what could be in the depths of space awaiting our virgin eyes because that's really what it is. We don't we don't really know what it looks like. We can look up at the stars and the astronauts can look out of their window in the space station, but you know what? It's, it's kind of difficult to really understand it. So what we have at the moment is our imagination. And I imagine that space is extremely colorful and beautiful if you go to the right places. So that's what we're gonna be creating today. Okay, so now I'm gonna move to some bright obnoxious colors. I'm gonna find a different brush. I'm gonna go with, I think it's pronounced Taralea. I'm not too good at pronouncing things sometimes. People on TikTok have made fun of me for it. I pronounced thylacine, thylacine at one point, and oh boy, I got some back, I got some backlash for that. But you know, I'm sorry if I did that, but you guys didn't need to, you know, those, those people who were trying to correct and go crazy over it, I, I don't know, maybe they need something else to do in their life than criticize somebody's video. But that's just my opinion. And opinions are opinions, and you don't really have to take opinions seriously. There we go. I'm not, you don't have to worry about being too precise with these because we're gonna end up smudging a lot of these textures. Smudging, smudging is an excellent thing to do. Smudging is wonderful. Just pop in your colors here and there. I promise it's gonna look like something in the end. Now make sure to record what you do or at least make a picture and tag, tag me on Instagram. My Instagram is Miranda the Hybrid. So make sure to find me on there and tag me because I want to see what you guys create. I'm very interested. I'm proud of all you guys, you know. You're all my students. And I like seeing how you advance and how you use what I teach you to do new things. So if you ever want to share your art with me, just, just find me on there and tag me. Here, the reason I decided to use this bright, bright, bright orange is because it's a complementary for purple. That's why it pops so much. And that's how I'm making the focal point of this entire picture. I'm popping in that bright orange right there to make sure it complements and it contrasts with the beautiful greens we have going on, with the beautiful purples. See how nicely that's blending in there? Of course, I remind you, it's going to be blended in a certain way, but I'm making sure to keep the concentration of this bright orange right in the middle. Because again, that's where we're going to have our stars, or at least I'm putting my stars in there. I don't know where you guys are going to be putting your stars. There we go. 
There we go. Now that's starting to look like something, isn't it? Kind of cloud-like. Now I'm going to find a big crazy brush. Maybe Old Beach. I remember liking that. I'm going to put in some interesting tones somewhere. I'm going to make it a little bit dark. Increase the size, decrease the opacity. Yeah, right down there. I just want to try to increase the interest, the visual interest of this picture. Make it as interesting as we can. As beautiful as we can. Because everything deserves to be beautiful and everything is beautiful in its own way. Look at that. This is going to be a crazy colored galaxy. So after we move from there, I think I'm going to take some extremely deep saturated blue and I'm going to push it in certain areas, like right there. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a tropical bird. If this were a nebula in the Perantane, in the Perantane, uh, God, what is it called? I love it when I'm talking and I forget my own plot from my own books. Ah, uh, yeah, Nazi blue. Nazi blue is the name of the galaxy where Perantana is in. I think they would call this the uh, Tesnastrico nebula because it looks a lot like the colors you find on the Tesnastrical dragons. They're very, very tropical looking dragons. They have big feathers and they usually ride with the elves. They're really cool. They're kind of, they pop up in book five for the first time. But that's that's a long way away till you guys get the audiobooks for book five. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but I have a lot of editing to do. Okay, so we have some crazy colors and it looks really, really pretty. The important thing is though that we do need some black in there. So I'm actually, for now, going to put it on a layer in between those. See where I did that? It's right in between these two layers. I'm going to go down to Classic. It's the easiest place to find true black. going to increase my brush size and just push a little bit of that dark there. Just like that. And if you decide it looks good, then you can merge it. But I like playing with it a little bit because once you put black in there, it's very difficult to go back. Same thing with white. Anything extremely polarizing is difficult to uh, undo once it's in there. But you know what? This this looks pretty good. I think we can I think we can settle with that. Maybe edge some in there and in there. Okay. So I'm gonna merge these two together. And now what we wanna do is we're gonna go into smudging. I personally adore jagged brush, but there are so many other brushes that you can use to make a really good smudging. Melalacua, I think is how you spell, pronounce it. What is that? Melaleuca. Melaleuca. I think I like that one. Let's see how it is for smudging. Let's see what texture we get. Well, that may be not too good. It's too much like a, it's too much like a brush. Maybe sin, signet? Singet? Ooh, that one's good. I like this one. So I'm going to move through and I'm going to just gently let the colors mix together. Just like that. Just like that. Wow, look at all that. Look at all the beautiful ways these are interacting with each other. It's, it's beautiful to be able to be alive and do these kind of things. By the way, if you guys want, you can do this with pastel too. I'm going to be showing you guys how to do it with all sorts of different, all sorts of different techniques because I don't want to leave out my traditional artists. I like making nebulas with traditional art too. I just need to, hopefully the, uh, <laughs> hopefully the Michaels haven't shut down yet because I'd love to be able to go to Michaels and grab some pastels or even some colored pencils or crayons or something. I'd love to be able to bring them here and we can all just draw nebulas together all day long. Because I love nebulas. I love outer space. Outer space is so beautiful. And so we're continuing on, pressing through. Now, you don't have to use this brush. I just think this brush looks really nice right now. In fact, I think I'm going to bop over to a different one, though. Let's see what else there is. <laughs> it would be interesting trying to do that with Victorian. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that wild? Look at that. Our technology is insane. I mean, if I saw that in a galaxy, I'd be kind of surprised, not gonna lie. But it's what we have. What about abstract? Now, well, what does it look like? Stick oh my goodness. That is bizarre. How we move to a different one then? Charcoals, elements, clouds. I wonder what smudging with clouds would look like. Let's see. No, that's not bad, but it doesn't remind me too much of a nebula. It's just this is too rough. I like things looking a bit more painterly. <clears throat> so let's go to my favorite smudge brush, because you guys have been asking me what my favorite smudge brush is. It's Jagged Brush. Jagged Brush is an excellent brush for smudging. It gives you just enough texture, but also just enough control. Look at that. Look at the way it's just letting those colors interact with each other. I tell you, that's beautiful. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. I'm not even doing much. Just quick little presses presses of the brush quick little presses yeah that's that's definitely my favorite brush for smudging look at that 
it looks so painterly now. And that's what I like going for. That's one of the great things about digital is that you can get very similar, very, very, very similar techniques. Look at that, isn't that? That's just, that's just beautiful. That's gorgeous. So just continue going along with your, continue going along with your brushes. And keep pushing those colors. Yeah, look at that. Oh man, that's just pretty. That is, <laughs> that's just really pretty. <laughs> man, I love painting. Oh, it's so good. It is so beautiful. Oh man, if you're an artist, uh, you have the world in your hands, literally. You can create entire little worlds in your hands and look at them and share them with people. It's really wonderful. I swear, it really is wonderful. I'll be posting this picture to Instagram afterwards. And make sure if you guys follow along with this, tag me. Tag it Miranda's Nebula or something, I don't know. And if I see that tag in there, I'll know that. I know that's you. But look at the way, look at the way with a jagged brush, you can just push these tones and left and right, up and down. And it's it's so wild. Look at look at the look at the textures we're getting in here. It's so pretty. It's just it's perfection. This is this is my favorite brush in Procreate. It's just so so good. It's such a good brush. Actually, there was a giant update that occurred to Procreate and they took away my jagged brush. I was so annoyed. And so I went into the old one because I still had the old iPad and I looked at the old version of Procreate and I completely replicated. I just went in and I replicated the settings and I got my jagged brush back. And it was completely worth it. Never ever give up your jagged brush. It is, it is such a wonderful brush to use. Oh man, look at all the texture we're getting in here. Look at this texture. This is the same thing if you had acrylic and you blotched it together and you used a dry brush. A nice dry brush and you just pushed it. That's exactly what this is. Same thing. Okay. I like the way the colors are interacting down here, so I'm not going to funk with them too much. But these ones need a little bit of love. Let's just, let's give them a bit of movement. Let's give them some life. Just mush it up in the middle, move it down from the side to side. Push it up to almost cloud-like shape. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that just lovely? I'm going to pull this into that. I'm going to push that into there. And just round these brushes up. Round these clouds up. There we go. I'm going to... This is a bit tricky here, trying to get this one right. We're going to have to paint over him a little bit more to bring his life back a bit. But don't worry, we'll fix it. He'll be fine. There we go. There we go. Pull it back down. Look at that. Isn't that just pretty? Isn't that beautiful? Amazing things you can make, right? I'm going to continue pulling and pushing. And just keep painting along with me or keep watching. Put me in the background. It's okay. We're all in this together. We're all on the same planet with the same blood in our veins, the same tools. It's all good. In the end, the same tools. We have like... <laughs> I mean, obviously not all of you have an iPad. I, if I could, I would buy every single artist I could an iPad and just let them do what they could with it because it's a great tool, it really is. I saved up for mine. Actually, I've been having, I had one since college and I just, I never went back. I was working with Cintiqs and frankly, I prefer this because you can take it wherever you want. There is the little handheld Cintiq and that's good, I guess, but I don't know. There's something, there's something really nice about the way that Procreate works and you can't get Procreate on really any other platform except for Apple at the moment. Which is unfortunate, they should spread it. But I guess they like their exclusivity. <clears throat> Anybody would. Okay, smudge that guy a little bit. I'm going to pull these tones a little bit. See how I'm pulling them and just smudging them like that? Yeah, that looks nice. That looks really nice. There we go. Wow, look at that. Isn't that just lovely? That's just so lovely. It's so, so pretty. Oh, it's so, so pretty. Man. There we go. There we go. So that's the very base. Let me pull that out even a little bit more. This is the very, very base of our nebula. The next step is actually using the right brushes. Actually, I'm gonna pull him down. There, there, now we go. So the next step I want you to do is make a new layer right above this layer. And we're actually going to grab the literal nebula brush. Now, the Nebula brush has something a bit tricky with it with the newest update. It'll change its colors uh, depending on where you push it. And sometimes you don't want that. So what you want to go do is double tap, double tap on the brush itself, just like that. And it's going to bring up how you adjust it. And now you want to go to color dynamics. And I think it's somewhere in here, but with color pressure, make sure hue, make sure hue is right in the middle. And color tilt, make sure hue is right in the middle. This way, 
I'm actually going to push mine a teeny bit over, but this way it's going to stay generally the same color. And so what we're going to do now is since my light source is going to be this nice bright orange, I'm going to choose orange. Make sure the size is right, decrease. I'm just going to push a little bit of that nebula brush in here. Just a little bit. We don't want to lose the texture behind it. And we don't want to lose those wonderful colors that we put in there. But just enough to make it look actually like a little bit glowy. It's the glow cloud! Just a little bit glowy. Do the same thing up here. Just a little bit of glow. Maybe pull it down a little bit. You see that? That what I just did, did right there is too much. So I'm going to go back. Because a lot of what we want to do is organically with the brushes at hand. Because Nebula brush is one of those brushes that really does a lot of the work for you. Like, there are some brushes in Procreate that do a lot of your work for you. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But if you want to feel a little bit more organic, if you want to learn a bit, just make sure to keep your brushes to yourself and see how if you can figure out how to do it with your hands. There we go. Doesn't that look pretty now? Now to add, this is, this is an important part actually, let's do this first. We want to do our light source, so I'm going to grab the light pen, and I think I'm going to make my light, I'm going to make my stars a little bit vermilion. Let's make them vermilion. And here's the thing with the light pen. If you put it on full brightness, it's going to make it white at the center, or very, very bright. If you put it on medium, it's going to get, it's going to retain your color a little bit more, so I'm going to make it medium. Let's start putting the stars in here. Randomize them a bit. Stars don't sit exactly across from each other like that. That looks unnatural. Uh, let's see if it'll go back for me. There we go. <laughs> it froze for a little moment. So make sure that your stars are randomized and in places that are easy to keep track of. And remember, your brightest stars... See, see, how, see how my light source is right over here in this area? That's why I'm putting so many stars there, because the stars are providing the light source here. So just in the areas where they need them. Nice, big, bright, beautiful stars. Just like that. Yeah, keep them coming. There we go. I'm gonna pull them out a little bit to the background. There we go. Look at that. We're already starting to get something that looks really, really special. It's already, it's already starting to look nice. That is just, that is just beautiful. Now, so we, so we have our general light source, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this little lonely guy up here a few too. Wow, you can hear the wind in the background. It's really windy here. Here in Virginia. So we're just gonna pop a few extra stars out there. Now if you're gonna be impatient like me, you see your stars are starting to take their own form. They're going a bit sideways. So make sure to make sure to give yourself a bit of time when you do this. Just just a little bit of time. There you go. That's just that there's just pretty. Okay, there we go. That's nice. That looks really nice. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go down to Elements and find Driven Snow. And make it a little bit low opacity and make it pretty small. And see, the orange is pulling forwards because warm tones naturally pull forwards. Cool tones naturally, naturally push backwards. Which is why when you look at this from a distance, our orange area around here pops out immediately and everything kind of sits into the background. That's on purpose, by the way. We're doing that on purpose. What I want you to do, though, is find a nice color, a nice tone. I'm going to do light purplish blue, right, right in there. Kind of, kind of like right there. And I'm going to use that color to make a bunch of stars. And just ever so lightly, tap, 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 tap. Just tap, 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 tap. Just like that. And I may make sure to lighten it. Leave the pressure as it goes up, because now the, now the nebula is hiding the rest of that. Let's just very lightly tap, 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 tap. <clears throat> We're making the background stars that are not being obscured by the nebula. And that's, that's important. Because, you know, you're in outer space, you have so many stars out there. So just tap, 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 just like that. Tap, 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 tap. Looks really pretty already. Everything here looks really, really beautiful because it's from your imagination. Your imagination is beautiful. It can be kind of scary sometimes, it can overwhelm you, and sometimes it can lead you astray and make you want something that doesn't actually exist. God no, I, that happens to me a lot. But right now we're just giving it a nice, light essence. Oop, I think that was a car outside. There we go. 
There we go. And I'm going to choose a slightly brighter version of that, maybe a bit cooler toned. I'm going to go through with a slightly larger brush, higher opacity, and just mark in areas where those stars might be a bit brighter. Let's let them follow their own little nebulas way in the background. Make it a bit smaller, tap those in. Yeah, look at that. Look at that itty bitty star texture. Isn't that nice? Driven Snow is extremely useful. It's a great brush. It does a lot of things that you need it to. I'm gonna pop them up right over here too. There we go. That's nice. So now we have our stars in the background. We have some stars in the foreground. We can also use Driven Snow to put some stars over here. I think I'm gonna go with a nice light turquoise tone. And make sure it's gentle. You don't wanna overdo it. You can overdo stars extremely easily and extremely quickly. So I'm gonna just add in a little bit of texture around there. Here and there. Maybe pull it to purple tones right over here. Push the purple down. Light pinks for this pink area. Just be very gentle, be very careful with what you add. Because sometimes it can overpower the picture. There, so you have some stars in there. We're gonna put some stars into here too. Just ever so lightly. Just gotta be, gotta be very gentle. Very, very gentle and very, very careful. There we go. Very, very careful and gentle. Okay, maybe a few up here, just to spice it up a bit. There we go. This is starting to look nice. We need to give these stars here a bit more attention though. So we're going to go back in. I'm going to grab my luminance brush one more time. And this takes a bit of time to do, but it's absolutely worth it, I promise you. Let's make some really bright yellow stars in here. Just adding in a few here and there. I remember our color was vermilion, so we need to be right here. There we go. I'm gonna intersperse them throughout this area. Maybe make a really bright one here and there. Give it a bit of a flare, just a little lick up, lick down, lick to the sides. You get a little bit of a star shape there. And pull them side, up, down. We probably want to do this for the background stars too, just to give them some really nice bright white stars. Here we go. That just looks wild, doesn't it? It would be so nice to be able to travel way out into the universe like this. Now I didn't forget about this little branch guy here. We're gonna give him some stars of his own. Wow, my iPad's getting very hot. It's doing so many things at once right now. There, isn't that nice? See how that haze fits in perfectly with those itty bitty stars? Of course you could do colors, all sorts of colors. I'm gonna add some down here, for instance. Make it a nice deep red. Oh man, that looks good. Those deep red stars look excellent. Just here and there, side to side, up and down. And remember to intersperse them. Intersperse the size, the texture, the location. Make sure it doesn't look like it was put in by a human hand. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to avoid the look of a human hand. And why, you might ask? Well, because nature was not made by a human hand. Nature is something so much more beautiful and powerful than we can understand, and it's here for us to enjoy at the moment, and we need to help preserve it. But also to replicate it, we need to study it. So that's what we're doing right here. We're studying the way the stars go through a little nebula in the middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere meaning your imagination. A tiny, beautiful blip in the universe. You can give so much with your imagination. You can do so much. You can do so much for so many other people. It's a great thing, really, to have a good imagination. There we go. That's really starting to make it so beautiful. Look at that. Maybe let's try some green stars. Who knows? Or maybe, maybe deep teal. Oh, that looks bizarre right there. That's a good kind of bizarre, though. I like that. It's starting to go crazy. There's nothing wrong with going a bit crazy with your art. It's fun to go a little crazy sometimes. We all do it. We all have our times. This is one of your times. Just add colors everywhere. Make it as pretty as you please. So there we go. We have the base of our galaxy down. Now, we need to make another layer. I think I want to go back to Nebula Brush. I'm going to make it nice and big. Because see the textures in there? I don't know if you can see the textures, but it actually has its own texture. It just went like that. Oops. Nope, not like that. Increase the opacity, increase the size. If you just laid one down, look at that beautiful texture. It's kind of better than what we're doing right now, but it looks a lot more organic. What we're going to do is we're going to take that organic look to our advantage. Now, I know this area around here is... Oh, wow, look at that. I know this area around here 
has a bunch of yellows, but I want to put something a little bit in the background. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some green, lower the opacity, lower the size a little bit, keep that up, and I'm just going to bit these in right in there. Yes, this looks really good, but just wait to see. Wait to see what we're going to do with it. This is the power of the Nebula brush, by the way. If you don't want to do things by hand, you just pull this buddy out and it'll do everything for you. Admittedly, I use it in the saga for Perantana Webtoon. It helps me do things very quickly. See, that looks hard. <laughs> I feel a little bit bad because what we just did with that brush looks so much better than what we were doing by hand. But just don't don't think like that. Don't let, don't let that get you down. I'm going to add a few in here. A few right there. I'm going to take some purple tones and I'm going to pop them up on top. Like right, right in there. Right in there and there. Now here's the magic of what we're about to do. Oh wow, look at the color mixing there. Isn't that, isn't that just gorgeous? I like how we made something beautiful by hand and now I'm just painting over it with the nebula brush which makes it look better. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that and if you press on the N, see that little N right next to the check mark? Press on the N. You're going to get a bunch of different techniques that can be used. So what I want to do, I want to apply the beautiful texture of that nebula brush and use it to accentuate, not to change, but to accentuate the lovely, lovely, lovely picture that we have underneath. Now I'm going through so you can see what each one does. Frankly, I still don't know what each one does. Wow, look at that. That looks gorgeous. That looks crazy. But you can absolutely use these to your advantage. So let's go to, let's go to add. I like add. And now we're going to decrease the opacity. This is what it looks like normally. Now if we pop it up a bit, that's what it looks like now. See, it's not that much of a change, but you get a little bit of texture and it adds so much. There you go. Let's just, let's just leave it at like 18%. And then bam, you have a nebula. This is one of my favorite things to do. It's very easy, very simple, and you can catch on. And there's so many different brushes and combinations of color. Making nebulas is literally one of the most beautiful, beautiful, and easy things to do when it comes to Procreate or other digital media. Now, I'm going to be making sure to teach you guys with pens and pencils and pastels how to do this, because I don't want to leave you out, because you can do this exact same thing with your pens and pencils and pastels and watercolors, and we're going to be going over that too. But for now, this is how we're going to be able to do nebulas. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. You have a good day, and hang in there.